In the previous video, I described how Therapy 1, the traditional therapy, says that autism is incurable, that is, the children will remain in their own worlds forever. Therefore, it focuses on making the children comfortable in their own worlds by setting up structures and routines so that they don't feel anxious and therefore more comfortable with life. I also said in the previous video that structure and routines are very useful for particularly younger children who are at that time of floundering and confusion, but that continued use of that structure leads to dependency for the rest of that child's life. I then contrasted therapy one with therapies two and three that say that such children can learn to leave their own world and interact with the real world just like other children do, even if they do it at a later age so long as they have the right therapies and training to help them. And that's of course where therapies two and three concentrate. They focus on helping children leave their own worlds and interact with the real world. By aiming to cure or reduce autism to neurotypical levels, both therapies aim higher and by aiming higher, achieve better results. So what are the differences between therapies two and three? By therapy two, I mean things like floor time and sunrise, both of which are very good. And by therapy three, I mean parent power real world training, which is even better. One example of the differences between therapies is that floor time, which is a therapy two type, uses the words draw or pull to describe bringing the child out from the own world into real world. And that suggests that their mechanism is not as motivationally based, that uh, instructing is a valid mechanism or technique. The ABA technique is also to demand the child's attention. So in that respect, it is a type two therapy, but its roots are in type one, where it regards autism as a defect or a condition and focuses on the condition rather than on motivating the child. Sunrise therapy, in my opinion, the best type two therapy, frequently uses excited actions, exaggerations, to get the child's attention and their participation. And while this is okay if the child is in a prepared state, if he or she is in a withdrawn state, my experience is that this is counterproductive because they're likely to get more withdrawn and then more wary of such training uh, later on or when it's used again. By contrast, Therapy 3 utilises the principles of Henry and Camilla Markham's intense world theory. That theory in essence is that when the world becomes so intense for an oversensitive child, the greatest impulse for that person is to withdraw into their own world and shut the real world out. And when the child is firmly withdrawn, one should not intrude. One should not verbally demand or over enthusiastically try to get that child's attention. One should let them be in their own world and that is the difference between therapies two and three in their approach. So therapy three concentrates more on the child's readiness before any training begins. An example of this type three therapy approach, the parent power real world training, can be found in module three of the training. That module outlines 10 preliminary steps that need to be taken before any training begins. In briefer form than the 10 steps, a three step acronym SET can be used as in ready, set, go. S stands for state, that is your state and your child's that you're ready and prepared for training. E is your energy levels. If your energy levels aren't high enough, it might be counterproductive to train, better to wait for another time. And T is to allocate that time so that you're not going to be distracted and you're going to set that time aside. Also built into the real world training philosophy is the recognition that a child needs rest in own world after having undertaken some real world contact. So own world is not denigrated here. It is recognized as a valuable place to retreat to and part of the overall therapy. There is a final distinction between therapies two and three, and that is their attitude towards curing of mild autism. Whereas therapy two sometimes talks about curing of mild autism, we maintain in therapy three that the word curing is not relevant because autism is part of everyone's character. Everyone needs withdrawal to own world from time to time, maybe in smaller amounts, but autism is something we all have. Therefore, what we do with real world training is to reduce the need for excessive withdrawal into own world by creating an environment where entering the real world is fun. 
ultimately achieving a level of withdrawal that is closer to the norm or the neurotypical levels. I hope you've gained value by this exposition on autism therapy types. If you're a parent, you're now more aware of the types of therapy that are used on your child and the kinds that you like to use with your child in the future. If you're a member of the medical profession, for example if you're a GP who's usually the first person called upon to make an assessment by anxious parents, I offer you a free download of the real world training modules so you can see for yourself and investigate the value of this type 3 training. If this sounds or appears interesting, I welcome you to email me via my website mildautism.com and I will arrange that free download for you and I will arrange another free download for one of your patients so that you can see how they get along with it. And last but by no means least, I offer you this, my first diagnosis checklist. It outlines the usual autism signs to look for, which you probably already know well, but it also gives parents step-by-step -step instructions as to what to do between when they first visit you and those anxious months between then and when they finally get to see the specialist. You can remove much of their panic and uncertainty because the checklist outlines helpful steps the parents can take for their child right now. And to conclude, for all those who would like further contact with me, I welcome you to do so via my website mildautism.com. I look forward to talking to you.